Welcome to VKS Coding. So in this video, we'll talk about database replication. So before talking about and getting to know about the database replication, let's first understand what is the problem and what the database replication will solve it. So here we have a client and the, here we have a load balancer and here we have a app servers. And we, here we have a single DB node which will serve the read write request. And in case if this DB node goes down, then there will be a single point of failure and data become unavailable in case of failure. So this application will not work after that, right? So to avoid this problem, we have to go for database replication. So what is database replication? So it is a process of keeping a multiple copy of same data in different server. So suppose we have a database here and it is a primary DB and it is having a some data, then we'll keep the same data in all these three below servers and it we are calling as a replica one, replica two, replica three. So what is the benefit we will get, right? So suppose if this DB goes down, right? So we can serve the read write request from any other another DB. Like this DB can serve the read write request now. So without the downtime, this DB will serve the read write request. So this is the benefit we will get it. So we have a different database replication technique based on the server architecture. Basically, it's a kind of multi-node architecture. So where we have an option for master-slave architecture and the second one, we have a master-master architecture. So we'll see uh, both the architecture and what is having the pros and cons on each of them. And after that, we have a different uh, database replication technique ba based on the timings of the data transfer. So basically, suppose we have a two database here, database one and database two. So it is having a primary uh, DB and it is having a replica DB. Then how we gonna trans sync the data between these two uh, DB. So based on that, how we are going to sync the data from primary to replica, we have a three types, synchronous, asynchronous and semi-synchronous. So let's talk about the master slave and we call this architecture as the active passive architecture. So in this architecture, we have a master DB that is kind of a primary DB and we have a multiple set of slaves that is a kind of a replica DB. All the write request and whatever the update or delete data modification related changes will be handled by the master and all the requests for the read will be served by the slaves. So these, uh, whatever the uh, read requests are coming from uh, this, uh, suppose uh, this data center kind of, uh, this is a DC one, it is in, and suppose uh, DC data center two is in Mumbai. And if the requests are coming from Pune to read it, then it will be served by the slave one. And the, if the requests are coming to read the data from Mumbai, then it will be served by this slave two. So what are the benefits we will get, right? So we will get the better performance because the parallel read write can be performed from multiple servers. A read can be performed by slaves and write can be performed by master. And this is reliable also because suppose one of the server goes down, then that the request can be served by the another DB servers. And this is also high available because data will not be lost. We are keeping the data in multiple DB servers. If one goes down, data can be replicated from the another server. And in this scenario, let's suppose if this slave goes down, right? Suppose this slave goes down, then the whatever the read, write, read requests are coming, we can transfer these to another slave, right? And suppose this master goes down, then what we can do? We can promote this slave as a master now. So that's why after that, he can handle the read write request both. So that's how we will be make the system as reliable. So now we understood how the master slave architecture will work, right? Master will handle the or the write operations and the slaves will handle all the read operation. And suppose this data center two is also wanted to write something, then this write request will go to this master. But you remember here, these requests are coming from Pune. So there will be a chances of latency here. So now any modification let's happen to the master, suppose any write request happen to the master, then immediately those data changes will be replicated to the slaves. So whatever the write happens to the master, those will be replicated to the slave one and slave two. And whenever the read request come from the Mumbai site, it will get the updated data. And whenever the read request come for the Pune site, both will get the updated data. This is how the master slave, master and slave architecture will work. Master will handle the write, insert, delete kind of a update kind of a operation, and the slave serve as a read request. A performance wise is better, but let's talk about the problem. Where is the problem actually? 
So suppose the let's talk about the first problem. Suppose this uh, write request is coming from the Pune site. Then uh, th this write request will be diverted to the master. So here the uh, requests are coming from a Mumbai data center to the Pune data center. It means uh, there is huge and it's far, right? So latency will increase in this case, right? So this is the first problem. Latency will, latency will increase, right? And the second problem is suppose master goes down and promoting the slaves will take a slave to master is taking a, a promotion of master will take a two minute, right? So until two minutes, uh, the data will be get lost, right? Because there is no master to handle the write, delete, or update request. So until and unless the slave got promoted to the master, so there will be a data loss in this case, right? Until the slave is promoted to the master. So here I have written the uh, two disadvantages of this uh, use case. First one is the promoting the slave to the master will take time, and there could be a data loss in that time. And the second will be the, if there will be a two different geolocation, right? Suppose one is a Pune and the second will be the Mumbai. Then the, if I, if we are getting the right request from the another side where it is not having the master, then latency will increase. So these are the two problems will be solved by the another type of architecture that will be a master master or active active architecture. So let's talk about the active active architecture. So we have a two sites. So first one is a kind of a Pune site and the second one will have a Pune, Mumbai site. Now both will have a, master master database system and both will be able to handle the write and read request in their own data center in pune data center they can handle the read write request and the mumbai data center they can handle by their own read write request so there will be no latency issue in the geo different geographic location for that particular application right and suppose this uh, particular write request is coming and it is changing in the R1 row, then the, this change will be replicated to this master to this master. And suppose uh, the write request is getting changed right from Mumbai site to in the R2, then this request will the changes from the uh, Mumbai site right to replicate it to here in the Pune site. But suppose there is a situation both are trying to change in the third row. Uh, same data both they are trying to change it and now both are trying to update each other then there will be a conflict right so to resolve this conflict we need to use some algorithm to resolve this conflict so there is there will be a better ways to resolve this conflict but there is a huge topic on this itself to resolve the conflict so we'll discuss about this resolve conflict later right so here we'll understand the active active and master master architecture basically both uh, the database center in the different geographic location will have the master database and both will serve the read write request and any changes to the any set will replicate it by to the another site so that's how this architecture will work latency will be decreased because both uh, database having the capability of the read write in the multiple regions now let's talk about the database replicators replication technique based on the data transfer time so based on that, we have uh, three techniques. First one is a synchronous replication. Second one is a asynchronous replication. And third one is a semi-synchronous replication. So first one in the separate synchronous replication, whenever the client write to the master, then master will hold that particular request. Suppose it is a kind of a time with T1. Then it will hold a request and it will write first to in his database. Then it will write the changes to the slave one database and get the confirmation from the slave one. And then it will write to the slave 2 database and it will get the transformation from the slave 2 database. And then it will return the successful response to the client. Suppose time is T2. So total time is duration is taken by the in this uh, synchronous replication is from time T1 to T2. Kind of a slower response time because it is taking a very huge time, right? To writing the data to the database, actually. Write request come to the master and the master is able to write into the slave request, uh, slave 1. But in the slave 2, he is not able to write it and slave 2 is down. Then that case, the write will not complete, right? Write will not complete. It will return, will not, unable to process the write, right? So that kind of a issue can come in the uh, synchronous replication. But the benefit we get the data consistency is guaranteed because the data is updated between the master and the slaves. So even the master goes down, we can immediately serve the read write request from the slaves, right? Because whenever the once the write requests are coming, we are writing the uh, data on the same time to the master and the slaves. And until and unless those transactions are successful between the master and the slaves, we are not confirming the write, right? 
so due to that we will achieve the data data consistency guarantee in this scenario but there will be a slower response time because we are holding that particular thread for longer time so this is about the synchronous replication let's talk about the second one is the asynchronous replication in so in asynchronous replication whenever we get the right request for the master right so master will immediately write to in his database and it will re return the success response to the client so here the client has to uh, so the thread will be hold get hold by very less amount of time and eventually after this some amount of time the master will replicate the data to the slave one and get the confirmation from the slave one and after that he will write the data to the slave two and it will get the confirmation from the slave two but here if you see the client has to wait very less amount of time compared to the synchronous replication so in this scenario if the master goes down suppose master goes down and he is not able to replicate to the data whatever he's written in his db and the master is not recoverable then in this scenario we'll get the data loss right so that is not good but in this case right we will get the fast response time because the way we write and respond right back compared to the synchronous replication it is a fast in response time and high better in performance wise right but we are losing the data consistency but if you want the data consistency and the performance wise faster also then we have to go for a semi synchronous replication so what happens in this scenario so suppose master is getting the right request at the t1 time so what he will do he will write to only one of the slave and he get the confirmation from one slave and he will return the success response to the client after writing to the one slave so he will get the data consistency guarantee because if the master goes down he can serve the request from the slave one right because the slave one have an updated copy as the master will have and until unless master is un unavailable that request read request can be served by the slave one itself so that is the one thing and once the right request is uh, responded back to the client as successful later the master can respond to the second um, slave as a synchronous way so basically this will be a synchronous way and this will be a synchronous way because the moment we get the right request master will write to his database first and then it will write to the synchronously to the slave one and then it will uh, confirm to the right so this is a kinds of synchronous replication and once he return to the right later point of time he will replicate the data to the slave two and get the confirmation so it's a kind of a sync and a sync combination so we can achieve better in performance and data consistency also we can achieve so this is all about the data replication so please do subscribe my channel to get to know more about the system design topics